2019 Wolfram Technology Conference. Um, I'm Sylvia Haas and I run social media for Wolfram Research and I'm here with my co-host. Hi, I'm Rechna. I'm a junior at the Illinois Math and Science Academy and I'm part of the Wolfram Emerging Leaders Program. We're here with John Woodard, who is the CEO of Wolfram Blockchain Labs, and he's here to tell us about the Wolfram Blockchain Labs. Hi. Um, so can you just tell us a little bit about what you do at Wolfram? What does that mean to be the sure. CEO of Wolfram Blockchain Labs? Sure. So we are a new subsidiary company, um, similar to like how Wolfram set up Wolfram Alpha in the beginning. Okay. Um, kind of what happened over, I would say, the past maybe five years. We had different blockchain related initiatives. It kind of started with Wolfram Alpha and just the price of Bitcoin, kind of driven by demand of users out there like you guys watching this video, hopefully, um, where people were entering in you know, the price of Bitcoin and we got the answers for them. So from there, we just added like more and more blockchain related services integrated into the Wolfram language for developers to use. And we kind of decided um, like maybe last year or so, maybe two years ago, that we should kind of put them together into an organization to help build up more services for developers. So that's, that's the majority of what we do. Um, and that has to do in practice with blockchain integrations, integrating different blockchains that are out there like uh, Bitcoin, um, Ethereum, Arc is a new one that's coming out that we're really excited about, um, and then others that we're working on. Um, from there, we also have computational facts. Akira and Piero actually showed that here at um, the technology conference, and that's really great. Um, it's an area where we really excel at Wolfram. Um, that's what we have with Wolfram Alpha that people use with Alexa and Siri and everything. So we're doing the same thing for smart contracts that are out there. So we're really excited about that too. Um, from there, we also do um, crypto asset analytics. Again, analytics are like really one of our strengths at Wolfram. Um, and with those blockchain integrations, we can take the data from blockchains and do analytics on them. And so that's, again, like it's really exciting. It's one of our strengths at Wolfram. Um, and then finally, I think one of the things that we're going to talk about here quite a bit is what we're doing with education and research. Um, one of the interesting things about just blockchain in general and kind of the emergence of um, Chitoshi Nakamoto's white paper in 2008 and then the emergence of actually Bitcoin in 2009 um, is that there are a lot of, there's almost like, I think Christian Pascal talks about it as like, um, a cooperative kind of society that emerges around the ecosystems of blockchains. Um, so that requires a lot of education and I think research so that you can appropriately build tools for developers and just tools for general users as well. Um, so that's kind of what we've been doing. That's what I talked about here at Wolfram during my talk and I think that's what we're going to explore. Okay, awesome. So can you just like yeah, give us an overview of what is happening with uh, blockchain and education at Wolfram. Sure. Um, so there are really two kind of large projects. Um, the first one is an introductory blockchain um, MOOC, or uh, I think it's like MOOC. So it's massively Massive. online course or something. Open, There's another o open, open course. Okay, so that's it. <laughs> so massive open online course or online open course or I don't know, something like that. Okay. Um, <laughs> but that's like MOOC. So the idea really is that people can work in kind of a self-directed fashion. Um, and we plan to have like video content, um, computational essays, which is this cool thing that Steven has come up with that has like natural language, um, code and code output to help explain concepts. Okay. Um, so we have that as well. And it's really a cool thing because it's like, um, we're approaching it from the society and economics that are involved. Again, like I was saying, like these are like cooperatives. So yeah. it's like you have to think about it kind of from a social science angle, not just a, a, like thinking about technology. Um, so that's one big thing that we're doing. Um, and then the other big thing that we're doing, like tentatively we're calling it like world of blockchains. Um, there were other names that we liked, but we actually couldn't get the domain name, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so that's something where we have that. Um, 
But basically, one of the challenges out there, there are so many blockchains and decentralized like services that are out there, and like there's no like registry service. Like if someone comes up with a blockchain, they're not like, oh, I'm gonna register it somewhere. Um, they just out there and kind of existing on the internet, and they all have, again, like this idea of forming their own ecosystem. Um, and their own kind of cooperative of developers, of users, of companies. Um, and so they're all worthy of that kind of exploration, I think. So what we're trying to do with that sort of research is like go through and gather these all up and then go out and reach out to them and get all of the attributes about not only their um, blockchain or distributed ledger, so like um, the folks who founded it, um, the community members contributing, but then also attributes about the technology itself and the, the public chain or permission chain that, that, that are out there and actually using it and running it. So we're trying to gather all that information as well. Um, and I think the cool things there are that like we're not only getting kind of the historical and community information, but we're also getting like really a Wolfram strength, <laughs> which is like computable data. Like you guys know we love you know, data. Um, <laughs> So we're also collecting that computable data, which are actually attributes of the blockchain in motion as the transactions are going on. Um, so like things like the transactions per second, transactions in number of blocks, um, the values of, of different things, stuff like that. Um, so those are kind of, I guess at a high level, the two projects, again, like the blockchain MOOC, which you helped me with the abbreviation yes. there. <laughs> um, and then the uh, world of blockchains, which is again like collecting these uh, different blockchains and their attributes. So for both of these, what are like the target audiences? So like, who are you looking to reach out to for these? Gotcha, so I think um, with the MOOC, um, the introductory course, we really are trying to design it um, with the idea of um, really being like a college level intro course. Okay. So it's anywhere from professors and maybe um, high school teachers who are looking at trying to introduce these concepts into the classroom. And maybe they're thinking of like having a flipped classroom and then they would use then all of the content. Or maybe they have like a few lectures and are only looking at maybe some sections of content. Um, but not only providing like the full MOOC if people want to use that, but then also the materials um, that we have. Um, so that people can like kind of I guess remix it into whatever they want to use um, so that they're not like um, Using the things that we may accentuate um, So I think again like that audience is anywhere from those teachers to then users too who want to learn more and we imagine that it's not only going to be um, folks who are developing stuff for blockchain but also because we have like economics and society and kind of those social elements, again, of like this cooperative kind of concept, yeah. um, we're looking at just, you know, folks who are like general community who want to learn more about this fascinating technology and the, the kind of the communities as well, along with um, folks who are like maybe college students where they don't have it or high school students, and they can kind of, um, come from, from, from their background. So it's like folks in business school, um, accounting, finance, economics, math, any of these areas, social science, like they'll find things that are interesting in the course. Okay, awesome. For, specifically for the MOOC, um, would you have to have any sort of like prereqs before doing it? No. Okay. So that's one of the things that's kind of um, hard. I'd say that people just need to um, bring effort because it is like, challenging like the material yeah. is somewhat challenging it's like thinking about um, economics and really like money kind of as a technology itself um, that's one of the really fascinating things that I have certainly learned in working with the fabulous economist who I should have credited probably first um, <laughs> Leanne Usher who um, is a professor at Bard a visiting professor at Bard College um, so that's like something that's like I've been blown away by that. Like just thinking of money as technology, going from like Mesopotamia and like the high priests of kind of um, finance, well not, I guess not finance, but, uh, <laughs> but taking like tokens um, and uh, using that to represent like different physical objects and having like the say over like what became contracts, like, you know, millennia ago to like 
you know, um, maybe in the last hundred years as we've advanced technology to paper to digital. I mean, it's just kind of amazing thinking about money as a technology itself. Um, and then like the monetary policy around that. And I think that's one of the fascinating things that we show in the MOOC is, although central bankers may not have taken Bitcoin seriously, and we're like, oh, you know, it's not, not a big deal. Um, the tertiary effect of Bitcoin has been substantial because Bitcoin kind of influenced Telegram. Telegram um, has like this kind of quiet um, raising of capital where they want to have their own cryptocurrency and the SEC has just recently stopped them um, from doing that. And then I think um, it's been amazing like in the past, I guess, couple of weeks where um, we've seen in at least the United States um, this challenge of Facebook with Facebook trying to come out with Libra and, and they're like what they call cryptocurrency. Some people kind of in the industry are like, oh, we don't know if this is um, cryptocurrency, but um, certainly central bankers are taking Libra quite seriously and you can kind of tie that back to this push of Bitcoin. So I'd say already there have been substantial things and again, like anyone regardless of whether they think um, Bitcoin and blockchain and all the decentralized technologies are serious. Certainly, like folks out there in high places, um, take like this Libra initiative quite seriously, seriously enough to have hearings. So yeah. it's interesting. So I found it really fascinating. That's cool. So, what are your future plans for these projects? So, hopefully, we'll get it out like relatively soon. Um, and I think we'll, we'll go out and promote it, not only to educators, um, but then also to general users, because we think that people will get a lot out of the course. I think it's really well designed. And again, I think um, thinking about money as technology is really like a cool concept. Yeah. It's, yeah. It was new to me. So um, I think with that, like, we also want um, folks to not only use the materials, but then take the, take the classes. Um, with the world of blockchains, I think, um, having it be kind of a definitive resource for people to learn more about both the public networks that are out there and then also the permissioned kind of options. I think that's kind of critical to that project's success and I think it would be really useful for the general community just to learn more because there's nothing really out there like that yeah. right now. That's awesome. Well, thank you for coming out to talk with us. I know that <laughs> blockchain for me is like an intimidating topic, so I'm excited to see the MOOC and the, the community. Great. Thank you so much for the interview. I really appreciate it. Yeah.